Welcome back as part of our recording series. <clears throat> um, for those who have not seen any of the others, the series is pretty much aimed at the home recording and beginner studio, you know, uh, artist um, trying to do his own things. This is what this is aimed for. I'm not trying to get, give advice to the professionals here, if you know what I mean. So we'll talk about interfaces today. Again, a gazillion questions about what interface should I buy. Um, now this, I'm going to try and cover all of it. And the reason I am is because I think people's limited knowledge causes them to buy things again and again and again. I'll give you an example. I'm on one of these Amplitude um, Facebook groups and tons of them are like, oh, I bought the iRig um, and I've got issues with that. Well, how do I do this? What, 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 what? And I'm like, why the fuck did you buy an iRig, right? Um, or these kind of specific interfaces for specific things. Now I'm talking about recording, right? So let's stick to that topic. But um, for home recording and small studio, you only really need a good computer, good RAM, Windows or Mac, doesn't matter. You need a good interface, a USB interface ideally, um, because USB 3.0 can take like so much data anyway, so you don't need all those kind of high data rate things with Mac and stuff. You just don't just need USB 3.0 and you're done. Um, your interface, personally, I would suggest going for the middle of the road, somewhere between two and four um, inputs. Um, balanced inputs, phantom powered, um, and a, a, a DI box, maybe one or two, or maybe one of those, like the Behringer ones, they've got the eight input DI boxes. That's literally all you need. Um, now we're talking about interface, obviously you need monitors and microphones and DAWs and all that stuff, but talking about interfaces today. Um, and lots of people are having issues with the odd interface here or there, the, um, the Motus or the Behringer or the Tascam or um, what's the other one? Anyway, there's, there's tons to choose on Focusrite. But honestly, you don't need to spend a huge amount of money. Um, I had a good Tascam one uh, to input. It finally gave up after years. Um, I was desperate. I needed one quick and I got one of these Euphoria UMC 2020 HD, so two input, uh, it's Behringer. 192 um, uh, sampling rate, honestly, no issues, absolutely perfect. They've got the, what are they called, the um, the inputs are that uh, Xenix or whatever, the good inputs. It works perfectly. I think it cost me sixty pounds. Um, I can run nearly everything because I've got a half decent machine. I can run nearly everything um, and monitor, and I can run nearly everything with with hardly any lag. So there's no need to go overboard. A good interface will not bring give you any more than this. I mean, some interfaces might have additional features, but actually all you need is a good interfa inter interface, um, uh, uh, good high headroom on your mic pre's, um, very low noise floor on your mic pre's, and a clear uncolored signal. Because we're talking about digital here, we're not talking about an SSL or an Eve desk where we want all this fancy, you know, transformer coloration and pesh, because you know, we're talking about a home studio. So that's literally two main things. A good, um, but not overly expensive um, interface. The Behringer ones now are absolutely fine. Tascam ones are absolutely fine. Focus rights. Um, in fact, I've, heard, I've seen more complaints and more problems with the focus rights now than I've had with any other brand. Uh, just looking by the posts that people have now, maybe it's because more people have them, so I don't know. Um, all I know is that these work great. Now, the, the Euphoria, you get them in the 2 and the 4, and I think then the 8 input. Um, and that's enough for the home studio, because 
you unless you have want to record live drums or you want to have you know three or four people doing something together and record them all live on separate inputs you're not going to need more than two um, balanced inputs phantom powered inputs so that's fine if you if you do have a band you want to record yourself your band yourself and things like that you need to start looking at interfaces with more inputs now there always have been these eight input uh, and then you expand them through an optical uh, to and then you can add another eight um, pre's into it and stuff like that um, and although I don't personally have a lot of experience with it the people that have have told me that they sometimes experience lag in the second interface um, especially when it comes to monitoring so um, when I bought my 16 input um, interface I opted for an interface which actually has 16 inputs and I got the Tascam, you get the Tascam 16.8 uh, and you get the 2020 and all these different ones. And I got the 16.8. And what it has is it's got eight balanced um, uh, phantom powered inputs and then it has another eight inputs. They are kind of like DIs. But what I did was I bought one of the Behringer 8 DI, 8, DI 800 or something it is. And anything that went into the back um, in, inserts, I put through the DI first. So I've got all the padding and the ground lifts available that I require and the, the boost and the cut um, of the headroom, which worked perfectly because with 16 inputs, um, you can do a lot. You can record a full three-piece, four-piece band. Um, you can record a full drum kit with as many mics as you like. I mean, 16 mics, that's more than enough. Um, and they work really well. They work really well. The, the Tascam one that I have also has internally, um, you've got um, um, EQing, um, gaining, um, compression. So things like that to try and get your signal to a certain extent. Now this thing when I bought it was about 2 to 20, 240, and this was years ago. And again, so you can probably find these on eBay for much cheaper. So if you think about it, um, if, if like here, I've talked about this before, but I kind of lost the studio place that I was, uh, because uh, there was problems with the, um, I had to get out of there. They, they basically sold the building and I had to leave. So I'm doing most of my kind of crap here now. And, I've got a mobile rig set up and it's got the 18 interface in it, a 16 interface in it, as well as the, um, as the DI box, as well as uh, a headphone amp. Um, but here I literally just use the kind of two input U4 as more than, more than I need. Um, if I need to mic something up with two, I've got the two inputs. Um, the other one is mobile so I can let, and it's on wheels, so I can literally just push it around, plug it in, and, and I go. So from an interface point of view, you really only need a two, four, or then whatever you want, depending on how, how many inputs you want at the same time. Now, I know this seems like an obvious kind of discussion here, but I see a lot of, dare I say, elderly folk getting into the recording um, thing and they're still sitting there with kind of these um, Tascam multi-recorders, these 24-track HD recorders or Yamaha um, or Roland uh, digital kind of mixers and all this kind of stuff. Now, I'm not saying you don't need them, but if you use a door and a, and a computer, why are you using a mixer? Um, you're going to record one thing at a time. Mixing things and recording it that way really doesn't seem like a good idea anymore and not necessary. In fact, you're just creating yourselves more problems than anything else. Now, having a mixer is not a bad thing because you might need it. Like, I like to use the mixer. Um, I've just got a small six, uh, but four channel actually. And so, if I want to mic a guitar cab and I want to do that mixing the two mics before it goes into the door, um, thing that Glenn Fricker, for example, highlighted. You know, you can use it every now and then, and sometimes I use it depending on what I need to do. But it actually is not an integral part of the whole recording system. All you need is a DI, 
um, a good interface, good mics and a door <laughs> on, your, on your computer. Then there's the folk that use things like um, Amplitube or any kind of VST guitar style stuff. And they buy all these peripheries because they think they, they need it, right? Like like the iRigs and stuff like that. Now, unless you're using your, uh, your phone or your t tab to play through to jam or to play live or whatever, which I just don't understand why you would do that, you don't need that to record. You just need a DI, good DI box and um, a good interface and you're laughing. Now, if you, if you think about the DI boxes, a good Behringer DI box, I'm gonna say good, but they, they work perfectly well, so they are what they are. Um, and that, it's under 100 pounds, right? The iRigs and stuff like that are way more. So if you're just using it to record or to jam, there's just no reason whatsoever to buy these things. Um, I, I just don't know why you would. You would just literally buy Amplitude or whatever VST, guitar, VST and you would buy your your interfaces and even if you had to play live and you wanted to use f fuck knows why you do that but uh, even if you wanted to play live and you wanted to use amplitude as your guitar sound DI box this in your laptop and uh, it's probably more stable anyway and faster so there is it's a bit of a rant actually because I don't understand where the disconnect comes from nowadays and why it's not logical for a lot of people, why they still ask questions about what mixer should I use, what this, what this, what this, um, or I'm still using my Tascam, uh, the HD recorder and all these things. Why? I don't understand why people still use it. If you've got a computer, you've got an interface, why, why, why are you still using it? They, um, let's say use the the HD recorder, I know that most of them can only record eight tracks at a time. So that's not even enough to get a good drum sound. You know, I believe you need probably 13, 14 to get a good drum recording. So you, you've got to constantly bounce and you, you don't have all the features that you have in the door. You don't have access to all the VSTs and plugins that you might require. You just don't have that ability to really mix well in one of these things so uh, pfft, out the door replace it with you know a good interface and uh, do everything in your door that's obviously my personal opinion um, and that is that for uh, which um, which interface to use and why thank you very much